Hello everyone. Today we're going to demonstrate setting up a small lab with a single host using an external manager on the Overt software platform. In order to do this, the first thing you need to have is a bootable media, either USB or CD-ROM, with the Overt node image, and then a separate virtual machine or physical host running CentOS or Red Hat Linux. So let's get started. We're going to be selecting our boot device, which will be the DVD CD. This will take us into the Overt Node Grub menu, where we will select to install the Overt Node software. Once that fully boots up, it will take you into the Installation Summary menu, where you, where you can begin to select your network and host name, KDUMP, language support, date, time, keyboard, installation destination, and your security policy. The first thing we're going to do is go into network and host name, and we're going to edit the ETH0 interface. We're going to go to our IPv4 settings, and we're going to configure an IP address, the network mask, our gateway, and finally our DNS server. Once we have those in, we're going to select our method to manual so that this sets a static IP on that interface, and then we're going to click save. After that, we'll go and select our host name. For this, I'm going to use overthost.lab.home. Click Apply, and then click Done, and that'll complete your network configuration. Next, we'll move on to the installation destination. We're going to select our hard disk. On this particular installation, there's already data present. So we're going to go ahead and reclaim all of that space for use with our current installation. We're going to let the automatic partitioning do all the rest of the work for us. From there, we'll set our keyboard layout. Usually that's just going to be your default. And then after that, language support, double check that, make sure that's all right. Then we'll go to our date and time. And here you can either leave what's there or put in your own time servers. I'm putting in my own time servers for this installation and I'm deselecting the default ones. Click OK, click Done, and then you'll be able to move on to the final step of this installation, to begin installation. In this section, you'll be able to configure your root password as well as any other accounts you'll need while the installation continues in the background. As you see here, I'm setting a very weak password. I do not recommend that, but for the sake of this installation, I'm going ahead and using a simple password, and I'm going to delete this when I'm done anyway. But uh, set your root password, and then we'll let the installation go ahead. And once that is done, we will move on to the cockpit. Now that our installation is complete, let's go ahead and reboot the host so that we can get the admin console URL. So we'll go ahead, hit escape for the boot menu, and then select our boot device, which this time will be the disk and not the DVD CD. We'll load into the so overt software, and then uh, once this finishes booting up, we'll input our root account and password to log in. And see here we get node status OK and then the admin console URL. That URL is the same address that you configured during the early parts of this installation. We're going to take that URL and we'll switch over to our browser and we're going to go to that URL so that we can pull up the cockpit of the hypervisor. It's going to bring up a web interface, and there you'll put the same root and password in that you used before to log into the OS. The cockpit is a web interface to the hypervisor that allows you to see the current running virtual machines. You can run the hosted engine install from here. 
you can see the uh, system resources, you can even create new accounts, restart services, and pull up an actual terminal through the web browser running against the host for command line executions. Now that our host is installed and we've taken a look at the cockpit, let's move on to the installation of the Overt Manager packages. As you see here, we're going to install the Overt Manage Repository RPM from one of the Overt re URLs that you can get from the Overt website. This will install all the repos that you need in order to perform the installation. Once that's installed, we'll perform an install of the overt installer. We're going to run the yum install overt engine, and this is going to install this is going to install a sizable amount of packages, and that's going to and that will take a couple of minutes to accomplish. Uh, for this install, it comes out to about 550 megabytes or so, and uh, so we'll just let that run. Like I said, that's going to take a couple of minutes, 511 megabytes. So it's going to take a couple of minutes to install. So uh, we'll go ahead and let that go. And then once that is completed, we'll then be able to configure the Overt engine to run on this system. Now that the Overt engine is installed, let's go ahead and start our configuration of it. We're going to run engine-setup. This is going to provide you a list of options which will configure the Overt Engine Manager to run a particular way. Uh, for this, we're going to be running all defaults with the exception of the DNS name and the password. The uh, fully qualified DNS name of the server we're going to set to the host name of the Overt Manager and then for the admin password, we're going to set a password of your choosing that is going to allow you to log in with the admin account to the Overt Manager web interface. Once you set the password, it's going to go through a few more options for storage, your PKI, and the Apache configuration. This is what's going to set up the web interface to be able to run, and then you'll get to the system configuration for a basic. Finally, you'll get the configuration preview, which is going to let you see all the options you've set up so far. Once you hit OK, it'll begin running through the configuration of the Overt Manager based on all of the options you have selected and input for it to run. Now that our installation is complete, let's go ahead and double check that our service is running. And then we'll switch over to our browser and actually access the Overt Manager's web interface. And our browser will go ahead and input the URL of the Overt Manager that we just finished configuring. We're going to select the admin portal and then we're going to do admin and the password we configured during the uh, installation. This will bring you in to the Overt Manager dashboard. Here there's a couple of different places you can browse around. You can see your domains, your hosts, your data centers, your clusters. You can see your storage. And the first thing we're going to want to do is let's go ahead and get that newly created host added in. So let's back out of this window and then we'll go over to compute where we will select hosts and then new here we will select our host cluster we're going to leave that as default we'll put in our name and then for the host name you can either do a DNS name or the IP we're using the IP address and then we're setting the root password of that host that we installed this is going to use SSH to connect to that server and install it into the overt manager don't mind the error at the top. That appears to be a software-related error that's not critical to what we're doing, and uh, it does not go away. Probably in a uh, later patch, I'd expect to see that error message addressed and taken down or suppressed. And uh, 
this part here, it can take a couple of minutes to install depending on the uh, system speed and the network speed. Uh, the overt manager is actually running additional configurations against that overt host in order to bring that in and set up its networking. So it's setting up the bridge networking and things like that against the host so that it can operate and run virtual machines from the overt manager. Once the overt manager finishes installing, you'll get a small pop-up message showing that it's completed as well as see the ch status change to up. You'll be able to see all the information about this newly created host. You'll be able to click that host and then from there it'll take you to another window where you can see the total number of cores, the total amount of memory, the software that's installed, you can see the running virtual machines on that host, the network interfaces, all of its devices, permissions, affinity labels, so there's a lot of information that you can get from here. You can also make additional configurations to the interfaces from the over, over manager interface as well. Now we're going to set up our storage and I have storage I've already created. So we're going to use an NFS share and it's going to use the overt host one that we create that we uh, installed earlier using the default data center. We're going to give that a name as well as set the export path of where this NFS share is located. With, once we got all that, we'll click OK, and then the overt manager will begin configuring that that NFS share as a storage domain to be used inside of the overt manager for all your hypervisors to run virtual machines on. So right now you'll see cross data center status. That will show locked until the overt manager has completed its configuration on that storage allocation. Just like with the host install, overt manager will give you a pop-up letting you know that the storage domain is finished being attached. Once that's completed, we can now go to Compute Virtual Machine and launch our first virtual machine. This virtual machine won't have an OS, but we'll just go through the motions of creating an empty container that will one day run an operating system. As you see here, you determine your cluster, your OS, your optimization level, which will be desktop or server, and then you'll give it a name, and then we'll select our storage, which is going to be running off the NFS. Once that's done, We'll set our network to over management, which is the default network that gets created on the host when over first completes its installation. And then we'll click OK. Thank you for watching my video. Um, I hope this has been helpful. Uh, tune in for more videos.